Imagine what would it take if next year at this session that the report was obscured by a robust policy debate as to what the country ought to do about persistent policy, poverty. Imagine that in 2015, uh, candidates as they stumped in Iowa, New Hampshire, North Carolina, had to confront the issue of persistent poverty and had to talk about it. And imagine that in 2016, there was a debate where a reporter would even ask a question about it, but where candidates would feel compelled to articulate their position. You know, most of us in this room, as good as smart and whatnot, we cannot imagine that happening. We cannot imagine that happening. And if we can't imagine it, we won't work to make it happen. What can make it happen? Imagine, that, imagine again that in January next year, that in the United States Congress, there was a real bill to set a goal to reduce poverty. Not a bill set, introduced for, pur for purposes of making a point, but one introduced with the intent of having it passed and having hearings and having a debate. Imagine if Peter Edelman, Marion, Marion Wright Edelman, and you know, Tavis Smiley, imagine all the people who were talking about it, if there was a real conversation that there weren't vo voices in the wilderness. Imagine if there was an executive order saying that when we score, make sure that we talk about the likelihood of reducing persistent poverty. If we began that, then we would end up redefining Ron's question. And we would, we would then have to say in contemporary uh, politics, what does this mean for the middle class? And as annoying as some of us find that question, it is the real question, and it is the question that will determine whether we build the bi bipartisan consensus that we will need to move this issue forward, which means that we've got to really talk about the costs and the price. We've got to talk about what persistent poverty is doing for a nation and our ability to compete in the global economy and to protect our, our security in a threat-filled world. We've got to talk about what it's doing to domestic security, domestic tranquility, and it's got to do, to, we've got to talk about it in ways that average people can understand uh, about what it means to our future and our nation, our sense of who we are. These are, these are the issues, it seemed to me, that we have got to get to. And so I appreciate immensely, more than I could tell you, the important work that the economists do in putting these numbers together and parsing them and figuring out about the fifth quintile and the fourth quintile. But I must admit to some impatience, if that's all we do, we, those of us who care about this issue cannot be satisfied with the conversation today. We've got to do something to create the momentum, and in order to create the momentum, we've got to imagine it. So Ron, the real answer to your question is what do these numbers mean and what does this report mean? It means we've got a hell of a lot of work to do and we ought to get on doing it.